Today, we're looking at a magenta ink by Califolio Bordeaux. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. There's timestamps down below so that you can skip around, but if you got the time, I would appreciate you if you check out the entire video. You can follow me over on Instagram, and if you're new here and like fountain pen ink reviews, I would re remind you to subscribe. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into this Pilot Vanishing Point with a medium nib, used it to write for a day, and to take my notes for this video. In order to have some standardization, I always use Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper in the first writing samples, although there is an additional writing sample with different papers later in the video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, so it came in a vial that looked something like this. And to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, and it does offer some nice shading throughout. Like quick starts lighter, gets darker. The starts lighter and gets darker. Brown starts darker and gets lighter. So it's very nice throughout. It really is some very nice accenting that it's giving. Eight seconds to dry. Medium is much darker than the extra fine, about the same tone as the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, but this time it's giving shading with that darker tone. Fox is darker on this part of the F, but lighter on the rest of the F, very dark into the OX. Lazy starts dark, but on the Y gets very light, and dog is a much lighter word. 11 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both do show color variation far left to far right, and we do get it in the writing. Tomoy River. No bleeding, some normal Tomoy River ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no real shading. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, only one or two spots of some shade, like the K in quick is much darker than the rest of the word. The is a much darker word than the stuff around it. 14 seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, about the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade, 18 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby shows us no color variation, and we really aren't getting much in the writing. Rhodia. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine, quite a bit lighter than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, and some nice shading throughout. Quick starts lighter, gets darker. Brown starts darker, gets lighter. Fox is light at the top of the F, dark at the bottom of the F, light into the O, darker into the X. Nice, and eight seconds to dry. Now medium is darker than the extra fine, about the same tone as the stub. The medium has no feather spread, halo sheen, and it does offer some very nice shading. Lazy starts very dark and works its way much lighter. Quick starts dark, gets light, and gets dark again. Very nice stuff here, and 11 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both shows plenty of color variation, and we are getting plenty of color variation. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the right is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we really see something strange here. This is got a kind of khaki brown in it. Now the line on the bottom is kind of there with it immediately going into water, but it's pushing up as that very light khaki tone. And then we get a very bright magenta at the top. I was not expecting that brown. The one on the left, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. Now that khaki has really gotten into the filter paper and held in place. Barely any of it's moved. That magenta, very running from the water. It really ran all the way to the top. It makes me feel like that khaki is going to be a real hold on color. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page and how hard it may be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I feel good using this in a note-taking situation because the magenta that I was afraid was going to run away didn't. It really held in place, making this good for note-taking if you like to go back and highlight. 
water is lifting some of the khaki, not or sorry, lifting some of the magenta, leaving a lot of the khaki and a lot of the magenta behind. It's really not doing a whole lot. Now, pen flush is completely removing the magenta. It's starting to break up the khaki. If you look right in the center, you do see it starting to get much lighter. Now, this was only 30 seconds of it sitting on the page, so I do think that a little more time and a tiny bit of elbow grease is going to get all that khaki out of your pen. If it didn't, the one-third bleach solution does completely remove it from the page, and if you use it, flush your pen with water immediately after. I test ink viscosity or flow by using a tilt test, and I've linked that video and put that in here for you. Now for the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Califolio's Bordeaux has a viscosity of 1.83, making this a wet ink. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. I find this by using my writing samples that were done on Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper. Califolio's Bordeaux has an average dry time of 12 seconds, making this a faster dry time. Instead of finding inks that look like Califolio's Bordeaux, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page, and I wanted to go with a nice turquoise, so I chose Diamine's Turquoise. The second writing sample is done on P. Berger, Levenger, and Strathmore writing. Here we see P. Berger paper. Now this is a French rule student grade paper. It has a lot of bleed spots that come through. A couple of these spots did touch the page underneath. They left little spots on the under page, but if that's a big problem for you, and it is a problem for me, don't use this ink on this paper because it does bleed through with the extra fine, medium, and the stub. It leaves a lot of ghosting as a result. The 1.1 has a lot of feathering that occurs all over it. Now it's tiny little feathering, especially in the word Bordeaux. Starting at the D, you start seeing a lot of this tiny feathers all over it. It's sort of an aside, I don't know that I would use this ink on this paper based on what I'm seeing. It has no spread halo sheen shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread halo sheen or shade, two seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, about the same tone as the stub with no feather spread halo sheen and no shade, three seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both shows no color variation and we didn't get any. Levenger paper. No bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and five seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, eight seconds to dry. The scrubby for both do show some color variation. It shows more in the extra fine, but we really don't get it in the writing. And last up is Strathmore writing paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is much lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen or shade and three seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, same tone as the stub. No feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, six seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine, far left to far right, does show some color variation. The medium shows none, but we got no color variation in any of the writing, and that is all that I have for the writing samples. So what do I think of Califolio Bordeaux? It gives a lot of color variation, depending on what pen you put it into. Now, given the right pen and paper, it's got a little bit of a pink lean to it, which is really very interesting and makes this much nicer to use than many magentas, which I've found I enjoy magenta inks. So what nib and pen are gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? I prefer to use it in a drier pen, preferably a dry broad. And the reason for that is it helps bring out that little bit of pink that this ink has to show. And it's very nice when it shows itself. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I'm gonna remind you if you enjoyed it, subscribe. Thanks for watching.